much as the race informed us, it turns out there's a team besides Mercedes in Formula One. <laughs> but and, Lewis and Hamilton doesn't even drive too that I think you wanted to talk about, right, Summers? Yeah, so obviously um, there are some other teams in Formula One. We probably never see them because they're so far behind the Mercedes. Um, but uh, obviously Ferrari are the next best team. Um, and one of the things I wanted to quickly talk about with the Ferraris is in slide eight, which is the Ferrari brake duct. And um, this basically is, um, we'll look at this picture and then follow it on with the following picture. Um, it's an asymmetric layout, um, which is something that teams don't tend to do a lot of, but it's all to do with cooling. So on a circuit like Barcelona, where you're obviously turning one, one particular direction a lot of the time, you might want to do something particular with the tires. And Ferrari were doing that. So in the the, um, the the slide number eight, you can see that there's some teardrop shaped inlets or outlets even um, in the crossover pipe, and those allow air allow hot air to escape into the wheel rim and into the tire, and obviously change the the way in which the the, the tire itself is heated to to obviously improve performance. Right. Where is that crossover pipe coming from? Is that uh, from the engine or is that coming from the brakes themselves? Okay, so that's the front brake that we're looking at. And the the crossover pipe comes from the inlet, the brake inlet. So that's where the airflow moves in and it crosses over the front of the brake disc. And it then ejects airflow out of the wheel rim itself. So it's all to do with aero, that particular component. Right. And that was one of the ones that was, interestingly enough, the brake ducts was dropped from the listed parts the year before Haas came on. And much to, I think, a lot of people's surprise, it's become a real, if you'll pardon the expression, hotbed of aero research. And they've become very, very complicated in managing downstream airflow. Yes, pretty much. And you've also got things like the blown axle, which is basically a hollowed axle which allows airflow that is taken by the inlet to be pushed out through the centre of the, the wheel, mm -hmm. um, out through the wheel nut. Um, and that basically uh, changes the airflow structures downstream as well. Fascinating. Um, and, and, that, and that's for cooling then or heating mostly? The, the, or for both? It, it can change depending upon the, where the tyre is and how it's being worked on the particular circuit? It depends on which configuration they're using. So obviously in slide eight, we're looking at uh, the, the layout with the teardropped outlets and mm -hmm. that allows more air to more hot air to be released from the disc into the, the rim and then onto the tire itself. Whereas on the other side of the car, which is the left hand side of the car, the right as we would look at it, um, you, you don't have those holes in the crossover pipe. So the air can't make its way to the, to the, wheel rim and it can't make its way to the tyre as effectively. Uh, I think the chat room are taking issue with you saying that Ferrari are the second best team uh, <laughs> with they're saying, are they Summers? Are they? Uh, well, in terms of the championship, they're the second best team. Yeah, good point, chat room. You might want to look at the table before you besmirch Summers F1. <laughs> with the, um, with, with those, um, uh, what did you just got, the, the teardrop shaped uh, ones on the brakes, the, yes. They've got it on the right front on this one. Is that because um, obviously in Barcelona there's a lot of longer high-speed right-hand corners and so the left front will get hotter and yes. so they're trying to balance out the temperatures between the left and the right? Yeah, that's exactly it, basically. Okay. They're, they're... You've also posted up a very nice picture of Ferrari's brand-new rear wing and there's some... Uh, some things you read about. Uh, I'm just very curious as your take on it. What are they? What are they up to here? And what what do you see as uh, being interesting about this? Okay, so obviously each circuit's got its own characteristics and downforce levels, etc. Um, Ferrari bought a new front, a new rear wing to uh, Barcelona to try and change the downforce that they were generating at the rear of the car, um, as did a lot of the other teams. Um, but Ferrari's main plane, which is the, the black section that you can see in the picture, that's the lower element of the rear wing, that mm -hmm. has changed. Um, and that, cha that changes how the airflow then moves rearwards over those two flaps um, and changes the amount of downforce that can be generated. On the end plate itself, which is the vertical element that obviously upstands and creates the wing, 
that you've got two gradient slots, whereas previously they only use one. Now that to me infers that they're trying to create more downforce because to enable them to use those gradient slots, um, they're pushing more airflow inboard and that means then that the rear wing will work harder. Right. And so now the question I was going to ask, because it's a bit difficult to see in the picture, is is you think those slots are meant to move air from outside to inside on top of the wing to help um, increase the pressure underside. differential or it's going to the underside? Underside of the wing, yes. yes. Okay, and, so you're bleeding and, higher pressure air or into the underside of the wing to try and get that moving faster so you increase the pressure differential. Yes. Between the top of the wing and the bottom, which adds downforce. Yes. Right. Okay. Yeah, no, I, I did a bit of reading on, uh, on rear wings, and it's pretty fascinating. And, and one of the things that's interesting is not all of these things all work efficiently at all speeds. So they don't always work against each other, even though it might seem like it at first. Yeah, the... Sorry, Spanners. Oh, no, it was just a question from the from the chat room. Um, if you look at the picture, there's the sort of advert with, with a firm called M-A-H-L-E. And I'm sure people will, even without the picture, you'll be able to know that they have these very kind of subtle indents striking diagonally, sort of rising up from the tyre area. And, and the question from the chat room is, do they really have an effect, that subtlety of, of indent? Yes. But basically, that, those are what we call strakes. Um, they can only be a certain size by regulation because the actual width of the end plate can own, can't exceed 20 millimetres. So the wing will be scalloped and shaped in order to stay within that 20 millimetres. And those strakes will take them to the 20 millimetre restriction. Uh, whereas the where there isn't any M plate as such, you you obviously obviously can move the pressure around. Mm -hmm. So that those strikes basically um, help to distribute the pressure and help to upwash the flow to improve performance on the wing. There you go, chat room words. Right. Well, it, it's it's interesting, and I'm curious. Now that I've read up on rear wings a little bit, even though, even though I know you're going to go on, one of the things that interested me was ways in which they shape this airflow to expand the amount of space the diffuser gets into, and then the attempt to attach the diffuser airflow to the airflow coming off, off of the rear wing and the challenges they face with that. And um, do we see also in this sort of a solution for the exhaust interfering with connecting the diffuser to the rear wing? Yeah, so on the Ferrari, which you haven't seen for the rest of the season, you've got a what we call a monkey seat sat over the top of the exhaust, and that helps to connect those two airflow structures you're just talking about. So the diffuser and the rear wing, you want them to connect the the, the structures together, and then obviously they they work in harmony to create more downforce. And the monkey seat that sits over the exhaust helps to connect those two airflow structures.